Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and on today's video, I'll be showing you how to use PostGIS with QGIS on Windows. To start, we're gonna head to enterprisedb.com, and then under Products, we wanna choose Postgres Database. Click on the download link, and then choose the Windows version for the latest version that's available, in this case, 16.1. Once it's done downloading, you can double click the executable that is in your downloads folder now. If it asks you to allow this app to make changes, you wanna say yes. And then on the first screen, you're going to click next. I suggest leaving the installation directory as is. And then you wanna make sure all four of these are checked, the Postgres SQL Server, PG Admin, Stack Builder, and Command Line Tools, and then click Next. I would also leave the data directory as is. And then it's gonna ask you for a password for the super user. So this is the admin of the database. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to give it a password and remember what this password is. I'm gonna just use Postgres and click Next. I would also leave the port number as the default and also your locale is the default. And then it's gonna ask you to confirm everything and you can click next and you can click next again and it's gonna copy a bunch of files to your machine. Once that's completed, it will come up with a prompt to launch Stack Builder. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is checked and click finish. It's now gonna ask what installation it should be associated with and you're gonna to wanna to choose the Postgres server you just installed on the default port. And then click Next. And then inside of this uh, selection, you're gonna just wanna open up Spatial Extensions and check PostGIS, and then click Next. And you can leave the download directory as is. And then hit Next again. You can accept this license agreement. And then inside of this window, you're gonna wanna make sure that you check Create Spatial Database and then it's probably a good idea to just enable all GDAL drivers. You're gonna use the same destination folder that your Postgres was installed in. And then this is the super user that you need to connect as. So you're gonna to wanna to use that password that you set earlier in the installation process. So for me, that was just Postgres. And now this is the name of the spatial database that you're gonna create. So I suggest naming this something like GIS. And when that's completed, you'll wanna click close. It will then let you know that the installation is finished and you can click finish. So once that installation is finished, we now have a PostGIS enabled database named GIS, but currently the Postgres super user account is the one that owns it and has access to it. So we wanna avoid accessing the database as a super user, so we're gonna create a new user and give them access to that GIS database. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the Start menu and run PSQL, and you should get a SQL shell application that pops up that was installed with the Enterprise DB package. So we're gonna click on that, and it's gonna ask for the host. We're gonna leave the default, which is localhost. That's where our server is running. And we're gonna leave the database as the default as well, which is Postgres. Port is also the default. Username is default. And then you wanna put in that password that you set during the installation. And then once that is signed in, you can type create user. And in this case, I'm gonna use my name uh, with password. And then I'm just gonna use password as my password. You're gonna put that inside of single quotes and make sure you have a semicolon at the end. And that's gonna create a new user and role. And then you're gonna change the database to be owned by this new user. And that should be good. And then you can type slash Q to quit. Then over in QGIS, you're gonna to wanna to head to the browser and right click on Postgres SQL and then choose new connection. And then you can give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this localhost and then GIS. 
The host will be localhost, the port will be 5432, and the database will be GIS. And you can click Test Connection, and it's going to ask for a username and password, so that's going to be the user that we made. So for me, it's Brian, and the password is just password, and you can click OK. And you should get a green success up here, that the connection was successful. And you can then hit OK, and that database will now show up. There's a few schemas already in there. I suggest making your own schema. So I'm just going to create one called tutorial. And then inside of here, you can create a table. So let's call this one points. We're going to add a field called name and change that to a var car of 64 and use point geometry inside of it and click OK. And that table was created. We can open up and see our points table there. And it has an ID field, a geometry field, and that name field that we added. If I double click on that layer, it will add it to QGIS. I can then toggle editing and start adding points and give them a name as well. I'm going to name this one Foo, name this one Bar, name this one Baz. I'm going to save my changes, turn off editing, and if I open up the attribute table, I can see I've got my entries there and they all have IDs that are unique. If you're looking for direct access to the database and you don't want to mess around with PSQL, which is a command line tool, the installation also installed PG admin. So you can go to your start menu and type PG admin and that will come up and click on that. And once that's started, you can head to servers and it's going to ask for the password for the super user Postgres. So I set that to Postgres. I'm also going to click Save Password and click OK. And now I'm connected to that database, to that server with multiple databases in it. And I can go into the GIS database and go into Schemas, under Tutorial, and I can find under Tables that point table that I made. And you can choose View Edit Data. If you're looking to import shapefiles or KML or GeoJSON into your Postgres database, I suggest checking out my video on PostGIS with Mac where I go over that. These steps are going to be the same using QGIS.